We've seen the dominance of OnePlus smartphones in the semi-flagship category for a long time now, especially in price-sensitive markets like Nepal and India. But now we have a new horse in the race. Samsung's latest semi-flagship offering, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite, comes bearing a lot of similarities with its flagship counterpart. And as you guys might know, I have been using the Note 10 as my primary device for a long time now. But you know what? Getting a phone that is near identical in terms of the Note experience for a price that is almost as half is simply awesome. Amidst all this, I stopped to think what is the difference between getting a flagship and a light flagship. Well, this video will answer exactly that question as we compare the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Lite. The biggest, biggest difference between the two is, without any doubts, the design. And you don't need a second opinion to know that the Note 10 has a far superior design language. It flaunts a shiny glass design with aluminium frames, while the Note 10 Lite goes with a mid-range-ish plastic body with aluminium frames giving it more of the A70S kind of look. Now, despite the inferior build material, the Note 10 Lite feels adequately good on the hands. It's got a good heft to it and is slightly heavier as well, thanks to the huge battery unit inside. But ergonomically, the Note 10 is way better and even the OnePlus 7T gets better marks on the design front when putting in comparison to the Note 10 Lite. And something that makes the Note 10 a superior offering is the inclusion of an IP rating. We have never seen a mid-range or even an upper mid-range smartphone have an IP rating and this is what creates a huge diversion among these offerings. And I think it is a good metric for differentiating a flagship and a non-flagship phone. I assume Samsung's goal here is not to offer all the high-end specs at a lower price because that is what the flagship killers do. Rather, they want to test their luck and penetrate into a market dominated by others by giving something others simply can't. The S Pen, but more on it later. Having said that, an IP rating on the Note 10 Lite would have been icing on the cake. But don't blame me for wanting more for less. And because that is not the case, I think I'll have to be extra careful with the phone. And while we're talking about what's better on the Note 10, we cannot forget the speakers. The Note 10 packs some amazing quality stereo speakers, while the ones on the Note 10 Lite is not stereo. However, that's not the only difference as they're significantly different in terms of overall quality as well. Just check out the sound from both these devices. As you can hear, the Note 10 speakers are louder, crispier and have good depth, whereas the Note 10 Lite falls slightly behind in each of these aspects. But the Note 10 Lite takes the cake in terms of port selection. You get a 3.5mm headphone jack in here, which the Note 10 lacks. Seriously, I had lost my hope about the headphone jack making a comeback in the Note devices anytime soon, so thank you Samsung for this. Now. Another area of variation among these two phones is the display. Although both these phones have a full HD Super AMOLED panel, the Galaxy Note 10 offers a slightly better contrast while falling on the warmer side compared to the Note 10 Lite. Other than that, the colors, the brightness levels all seem to be almost identical. But of course, you don't get a curved display on the Lite variant which makes it have a slightly more pronounced bezel on the top and the sides than the Note 10. Now, the display would have obviously looked better with thinner bezels on the Note 10 Lite, but that's not on our hands, is it? On the contrary, if you are someone who isn't that big of a fan of curved displays and thinks them to be prone to accidental touches or just gimmick, you have got what you want with the Note 10 Lite. All things considered, I am still a fan of this display. Samsung's Super AMOLED panel with excellent viewing angles, large screen area and good brightness does not disappoint, which as a result did not make me miss my Note 10. Talking about security, you get an in-display fingerprint sensor on both. However, Samsung has cheaped out on an inferior optical in-display fingerprint sensor on the Note 10 Lite as compared to the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor on the Note 10. And like every other optical in-display scanners we have seen on the company's A-series, 
this one is a bit slower than that of the Note 10. Software-wise, it's basically the same as both phones run on Android 10 with One UI 2.0 on top. So the experience is more or less same. Now talking about the performance, as you might have guessed, there is indeed a difference among these two phones. The Galaxy Note 10 ships with the 7nm based Exynos 9825, while the Note 10 Lite comes with the dated 10nm based Exynos 9810. And of course, within a span of two years, Samsung has made its offering better, though not drastically, but there is a notable difference. For instance, I tested both the phone's multitasking capabilities and found the Note 10 doing a better job than its successor Lite variant. I also rendered one of our 1080p videos to 720p on both the Note 10 and Note 10 Lite and without any surprise, the Note 10 did it exactly a minute faster. What I really wanted to check was also the gaming performance because I play a lot of games on my phone and I think it is a crucial aspect for many of us out there. On both devices, I could play PUBG on the highest settings possible without many starters. However, I found the Note 10 Lite having slightly smoothened graphics than the Note 10. The visuals on the Note 10 look sharp and pleasing, whereas on the Lite model, I found the graphics to be not as sharp. So although the CPU performance is more or less similar, the Note 10 definitely has a remarkable edge in terms of GPU against the Note 10 Lite. Even the benchmarks are evidence of the Galaxy Note 10's superior performance, where it beats the Note 10 Lite by a very good margin. On the memory side even, the older Exynos 9810 uses UFS 2.1, whereas you get the latest UFS 3.0 on the 9825. This means you get better read and write speeds on the Note 10. So I think Samsung could have gone with the Snapdragon 855 just like on the Esther Lite because even the Snapdragon 855 is almost a year old. So this makes the OnePlus 7T still the best performing phone in the Note 10 Lite's price range. Anyways, let's get back to comparing the Note 10 and Note 10 Lite. While the Note 10 came on a single 8GB memory configuration, you can choose between 6 or 8GB on the Note 10 Lite. The distinction continues in terms of storage as well. You get 256 GB of internal storage on the Note 10, whereas 128 GB is what you are getting on the Note 10 Lite, which I think is still ample storage for a regular user. However, if that does not work for you, there's still the support for a memory expansion via microSD card. Now it's time to talk about the cameras. I did compare the cameras between the Note 10 and Note 10 Lite a little in my hands-on video and even after using it for all this time, my judgment remains unchanged. Spec-wise, you have a triple camera setup on the Note 10 featuring a 12-megapixel primary lens with a variable aperture of f1.5 to 2.4, a 12-megapixel telephoto lens and a 16-megapixel ultra-wide-angle lens. The Note 10 Lite, however, has a slightly changed camera setup with a 12-megapixel primary lens with fixed f1.7 aperture, a 12-megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12-megapixel ultra-wide-angle lens. Color-wise, images from both the phones are punchy and vibrant. The Note 10 Lite's colors look truer to life, whereas the Note 10's images are slightly more saturated. Regardless, photos come out fantastic with plenty of details as well. As for portraits, it's a little difficult to conclusively determine which is better. There's a hint of a red tint in the images from the Note 10, whereas that is slightly toned down on the light variant. As both click portraits from the telephoto lens, the subject focus is good on both, while the background blur looks equally nice on both. The 2 times telephoto capabilities are also on the same level. In some images, you might see slight color differences among the Note 10 and Note 10 Lite, but otherwise, everything is the same, from the quality to the details, everything. Wide-angle images share the same story. Apart from some minor color differences, there is nothing much to distinguish here. Here are the samples for you to check out. However, the nighttime images take a different turn altogether. I found the Note 10 to have visually toned down colors than the Note 10 Lite, in a good way that is. The Note 10 Lite, on the other hand, has a very warm color tone and looks slightly unnatural. The images clicked from the dedicated night modes share the same fate as well. Moving to videography, both phones can go up to 4K at 60fps and are equipped with OIS. 
and the video quality from both these phones are identical. Similarly, slow-mo videos at 240 and 960 fps are also identical. My selfie camera test also yielded more or less a similar conclusion. I found little to no difference at all between the images from both the cameras in terms of either regular or portrait selfies. Sometimes though the Note 10 Lite produces slightly warmer tones but other than that, nothing is different, except for the resolution. In conclusion, I love the fact that Samsung has not made any remarkable compromises in terms of the camera on the Note 10 Lite. Okay, now that we're done with the cameras, let's talk about another major difference, the battery. Well, the battery sizes on the Note 10 and Note 10 Lite are 3500mAh and 4500mAh respectively. Even from the sizes, we can guess which one would be better. I got significantly better battery life on the Note 10 Lite with more than a day of use, whereas the Note 10 barely lasted me a day. The inclusion of a bigger battery on the Lite variant would also justify the fact that the device needs more juice to power such a huge screen, which if I didn't mention earlier, is as big as the Note 10 Plus. When it comes to charging, the Note 10 and the Note 10 Lite are similar as both phones support 25W fast charging. However, the charging on the Note 10 is slightly faster due to its USB 3.1 power delivery mechanism, where the Note 10 Lite supports only USB 2.0. Also, while the Note 10 comes with wireless and reverse wireless charging capabilities, the new Note 10 Lite is void of it and you will have to use a cable for your power needs on the phone. Now, let me finally talk about the one thing that makes the Note 10 Lite special, the support for the S Pen. Until now, we would only see the coveted S Pen in high-end and therefore expensive Samsung Note devices. But now, the company has made the feature accessible to an entirely new category of audience, people like us, to be honest. The S Pen on both the phones look the same, feel the same and have almost similar functionalities. By almost similar, I mean that you don't get all the features of the latest Note 10 S Pen. Rather, the S Pen on the Note 10 Lite lacks a gyro sensor and thus packs feature of the older generation Note device. Yes, you don't have the swiping gesture features with which you could swipe photos, toggle between front and back cameras, etc. However, I don't mind that at all, the reason being that the S Pen on the Note 10 Lite nevertheless retains the core functionality. I can still make doodles, work on my art projects, write notes and memos, send it to people and so much more. The ability to convert handwriting into text is still there. So to reiterate, I don't mind the toned down S Pen on the Note 10 Lite at all. Now for the moment of truth. Which one is better, the Note 10 or the Note 10 Lite? Well, as long as you have a flagship competing with a light flagship, the former will always be better in terms of delivery. But you also need to think about the price to performance ratio, which I think the Note 10 Lite excels at. Even at today's date, if you go by the Note 10, it will cost you over a lakh here in Nepal, which is about a grand in US dollars. Now consider another scenario. You're getting almost a similar offering in about half the price. The Note 10 Lite costs Rs 60,000 here in Nepal for the 8128GB variant, which converts to some 525 US dollars. Sure, it cuts corners in terms of design and does not offer the latest of chipsets, but I never did feel slightest of problems with the Note 10 Lite. Okay, the Note 10 Lite might not give you the best of performance in this price segment, but if you look at the overall utility, it delivers more. Like a flagship great camera, great software experience, one of the best displays, and above all, the S Pen. This is the perfect phone for someone like me who dabbles in arts, who wants good cameras and a good display, but can do with above average performance. So that was our comparison of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Lite. Do subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.